Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tackets. Today we're going to be taking a look at the TP-Link AX1800. Uh, That's the Archer AX20. We previously checked out the AX1500. Uh, that was the Archer AX10. So, man, as soon as I bought this unit, the price went down about 20 bucks, And then three days later, Amazon Prime Day, and the price went down another 20 bucks. It's just how it goes. Um, and then here, the price definitely came down on this. It cost me about 130 30 Canadian rupees. Anyways, I haven't even opened this yet. Come with me. Join me. We'll see how this goes. For, we'll do it live. Yeah. Okay, so of course, looks about the same. You get the same cards. You get the same uh, recyclable material. I definitely love to see that. This one is bigger for my pleasure because I like the big black ones. That's right. TP Link. For some reason, I keep thinking TP Link are supposed to be white kind of riders, but it looks really slick. Of course, we have the uh, mate kind of uh, thing where if I take that off and put my fingerprint on there, it'll be there till the end of time. We got a USB, uh, WPS Wi Fi reset, LED. Okay, we have an LED, you got a power, and then the power input, and it pretty much looks just like the uh, AX1500. Let's uh, take a look at the size comparison. Okay, yeah, I take that back. They look exactly the same. I bet they're all the same model, the same unit. The only thing that's different is at the back, this one uh, has the LED button, and this one does not so i have the unit on plugged in and i found out the led light just turns out uh, the led light here the switch just turns off the led lights and uh, other than that it does seem to be the same type of unit now i have a uh, wi-fi ax down here this is very generic uh but it has intel wi-fi 6 ax uh 200 at 160 megahertz automatically picked up the driver which is very nice going to set up the router now and wish me luck so this first test that i'm going to throw down is on an existing computer that i'm doing the screen capture from it only has a g branded uh, wi-fi type of usb but i want to see what the difference is like here's the stats this is actually pretty low this is what i get with my standard uh company provided Wi-Fi. Now let's see what happens if I switch it over to the new TP-Link 1800. Okay, so here are the new results from the new router. The ping is only 10 milliseconds, and on the old one it was 107. The download is 16.22 megabits per second. On the old one it was 8.49. Upload on this one's 5.35 megabits per second on the old one was 6.53 okay so that's intriguing next let's switch over to uh, the unit with all the power shall we okay so i got this bad boy hooked up good to go 5g network the ax let's do a test and see how fast this one does compared to the other oh my goodness it's amazing nine millisecond ping Oh man, I'm getting... That's good. That's really good considering how fast uh, the G unit got. Yeah, 80 megabits per second. That's good. Well, 79.4. I'm rounding up still. I'm really happy with that. The upload seems to be as good as it gets. Maybe that's about as good as my company gives me. Hmm. Still, I am very pleased. I am very pleased with these results definitely compared to my other one let me let me connect up to my old one with dual band and we'll see how it does <laughs> my old router is actually faster that's funny so of course this is going to have everything to do with uh this is going to have everything to do with how fast my internet is and how far this thing has to connect this thing at this point has to connect through a router and uh the other one is just beaming me the information directly from the other side of the house. Definitely expected better results, but maybe I can say this is a really good uh, this is a really good card. Okay, so if I bypass my basement switch, I get comparable results as I would with my standard unit. So it looks like my bottleneck is my basement switch. Curse you, basement switch. <clears throat> Yarp, this is my, this was my Bitcoin stash, but now I'm just using the World Community Grid. 
and over here we can see the temperature this is my basement heater and my bottleneck apparently well folks it looks like my standard high speed just isn't enough to properly show you how awesome the um, AX wave is which is unfortunate but I gotta say that everything that this unit does, it does really well. Even when it comes to older versions, older spectrums, you've seen the difference that it made with my uh, with my G, with my wireless G unit in my other system. So like I said, I'm having a difficult time using the Wi-Fi AX to its full potential because it way outmaxes my internet speed. It way outmaxes uh, the speed of a lot of things. So Moore's Law hasn't been keeping up with computers, but man, this new generation of Wi-Fi is just insanely fast. So I jumped on Wi-Fi speed. So one easy way to test your connection is to come to the Network and Sharing Center click on your connection and it'll tell you it'll say right here exactly what your speed is and that's 1.2 gigabytes per second so that's about 150 megabytes a second and that's not too bad so I really have to hand it to this unit it is good stuff it's not I can't test out the Wi-Fi test pro on android this is a screenshot of my android and uh, if you look right under the dial you will see that my wi-fi speed is about 300 megabits per second this is on my uh essentials android phone but on my lg g7 i can get i think about 550 megabits a second which is awesome this stuff is just so far more advanced than most of the units that i have once again, it's difficult to uh, test the speed, but the speed is very good. My internet's not keeping up with it. You can see that download right there. It is definitely not keeping up, but uh, hopefully when I get the fiber in, it definitely will. So this is stuff for the future. I mean, we're, we're getting this Wi-Fi 6. It's like crisis. Man, it's going to be, uh, future things are going to be running off for a very long time. This is the best this is the best generational leap forward that we've had for Wi-Fi, and it's really exciting. Now, the USB mass storage is definitely something that's very convenient. Unfortunately, it's only USB 2.0, so even though I have an M2 card hooked up to the unit here, the speeds it transfers at is still relatively slow, but this is still very useful. You come into the router, you go to the USB advanced, USB storage, and it'll give you the ip number i can only get this to work when i'm on another unit that is on a uh, on the same wi-fi but anyways you just fire in that ip address in here and uh takes me to an h drive and then we can see everything that's on that drive so i'm gonna copy and paste just to show you oh wow that was actually a really fast that must have been a small file um, when I was, uh, moving a bunch of videos, it was going to take about 45 minutes, and it definitely didn't take 45 minutes to transfer, and it took about, um, 17 gigabytes, so it's relatively quick, USB 2.0, but it would have been nice if I could use that to, uh, to test the speed of this unit over Wi-Fi. All right, so now we're going to have a look at the wireless spectrum on an Android, and we can see that this TP link is out for itself. It uh, so generally you want your arc to be in an area all of its own. You don't want to be in any one. You definitely don't want to cut through arc area like uh, this TP link is cutting through your fault. That's definitely not good. It'd be best if you could share the same area, but you definitely don't want to be cutting into other people's area. That's uh, it's not good for anyone. Anyways, this is a 2.4 band. Let's check out the 5 and TP link. I am sharing a link with this uh, Irvin. And over here, we get uh, we got an Eris. And over here, your fault once again. So in the 5G, it seems to be, well, I guess okay enough. I wonder if there's a way that I can change this through the settings. I would have hoped it would automatically get this stuff, though. But still, I'm not having that much of an issue. 
So I really got to hand it to this unit. It's definitely fast. It works really well with all of my old stuff and pushes my older stuff to its limits. So I definitely would recommend this if you are looking for a unit. Uh, the next thing I got to do though is test the range on it. All right, folks, next I want to do a distance and range test. I have two routers set up right up here in this window. One is an AC 1200 Linksys, and the other one is this AX 1800. Let's take a look at how far we can get with this. So off the bat, I'm definitely not as close as I could be. Still right here. Let's take a look. The 5G, not too bad. Not as bad as it could be. So this is about the same distance that all of the AC units start kicking out. Looks like a bunch of these are just out for themselves. I'm about that far. Line of sight. That's about how far you'll get, folks. I wish I had an AX phone, but sadly I do not right now. But I don't think I'd get any more range. Usually with these new things you get less range with more power. Of course, since I have a thermal camera, it would be criminal of me not to take a shot at this. It isn't as hot as I thought it would be. Anyways, next up, let's take a look at the uh, internal controls. Okay, so as soon as I get into this, I notice that it's changed its own IP number, which is awesome, uh, or it wants to, to avoid IP conflict. Now, this is what my standard router is at, and it's saying, hey, you want to change it? And yeah, we definitely want to change it so it's different than your router. And then you got to put in a new password. And next up, it auto detects what your connection is like. Dynamic IP. Use default MAC address. And then your SSID. And you can change your password to whatever you want right here. We've got 2.4 enabled, got 5 gigahertz enabled automatically. I want to set each band differently. And then, if we want to, we can get the app and I definitely recommend you check the app out. Everything that you can do through this portal, you can also do through the app. I think you might even be able to set it up with the app. Okay, so we're all set up. Hit that next. And um, by this point, if you've changed your name or your password of anything, you got to come down here, reconnect to whatever it is, whatever you changed it to, and then away you go. Okay, so we're all set up now. All right, folks, let's have a look through the settings that we got here. That's what we got in internet. Let's come on over to wireless. Got a lot more information there. You can always add Smart Connect. Now, Smart Connect is when uh, it only broadcasts one band, and it decides what band to put you on. I've never been too happy with that. It'll decide what band, how fast, all that fun stuff. Once again, never been all that happy with it. Um, guest network, yeah, you can also set up a guest network if you want. In advance, you got a lot of special things in advance. You got your LAN, DHCP server, IP address. Let's come on down to internet. Yeah, so we've seen this. LAN, IPTV, VLAN, DHCP services. Come on, let's scroll down. There we go. And then dynamic DNS. Routing. TP link information. So TP link information. You want to be on here so that you can um, so that you can do your things remotely ultimately. Anyways, USB, you can stick a USB storage in there and set it up from here and even use uh, use it with time machine very nice not forwarding here's your port forwarding uh, port triggering UPNP DMZ uh, parental controls of course you can add different parental controls um, on particular devices I only have one device hooked up to this right now but you can do all kinds of interesting parental controls, which is nice. Quality of servers, uh, service. Make sure that you put what you actually get within here. Don't just hit OK and go. 
Um, here's some more security, firewall, access control, IP and MAC binding, ALG. Here's your VPN services, open VPN, PPTP connections, IPv6. I never use IPv6. Most people uh, don't seem to. It was supposed to have taken over a long time ago, but it never really seemed to. And then system. Oh, I love this. You can just check for firmware upgrades. You know what? I'm kind of surprised that this thing doesn't have it. need any firmware upgrades. Back up, restore, factory restore, administration, system logs, diagnostics. Yeah, I'm not seeing any errors here, so that's pretty good. Time and language, reboot, you can reboot it from here. LED controls if you want your LEDs on or off. I don't know why that would really even bother anybody. Wireless router mode currently. Yeah, so I should probably bump it down to here But if you bump it down to here and use it as an access point you lose your ability to uh, do a lot of stuff from here It basically just kind of becomes a dummy ultimately Next up, let's check out the TP link tether app. This is available on the Play Store and the apps Apple Store So as soon as we get into it, you can see we got all of our information here. You can see the passwords to the Wi-Fi, you can get right into into the security, and you can export it. No, that's not an export button. My goodness! Apparently, you can't export all this information to your friends. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anyways, to come on over to clients, circle on the far right, and we can see everything connected. Now, within here, if anything is downloading, it'll actually show us what's going on. But none of these systems are on. Okay, I got to the computer on YouTube videos now. And that's, um, that's Alex. No, it's not kicking in just yet. But if you give it some time, it will kick in. It'll show you what everything's uploading and downloading. And if you click on it, you can see more information, total traffic usage. Um, you can make it a high priority here at the bottom. Oh, you have to set quality of service first. So we'll go over to here, enable quality of service. Once again, you got to remember exactly how many megabytes a second you got coming in. So I'm at like, what is it, like uh, like 10, and what did I say my bandwidth was? I think, yeah, let's say, let's say 150. That's megabits, not megabytes. Remember, a byte is one-eighth of a, a megabit. A byte is one-eighth of a bit, sorry. Anyway, so it's got a little crown there. It means that it is uh, on the good list, on the list to do the best. And, of course, we can come over here and set guest network up here at the top left. Oh, actually, we can switch our devices, too. There's my AX10. And, anyways, top left, three lines. My devices. It um, shows you your devices. Smart Life Assist. If this, then that. And Alexa. I don't use Alexa. Too bad this doesn't work with Google. Um, and then if you come on down here to settings, we can get almost everything that you'd be able to get new firmware available share i don't know why i'd want to share that but yeah you can get to all of the options that you normally would information yeah there's the wireless down here bottom right tools that's right uh you can set it up change the wireless we've already seen that of course quality of service internet connections all that fun stuff yeah basically oh the LED control you can turn the lights on and off from here I don't see why that's such a big deal they'd even put that there but yeah, I guess if you're uh, setting putting a little extra money in there so yeah it's a really cool app and uh, it's definitely a good tag along for the router of course since I have a thermal camera it would be criminal of me not to test this out. It's not actually as hot as I thought it was going to be. Anyways, let's check out this 